All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to Go Folk Yourself. This is a special episode on superheroes and American mythology. We're going to take a special look at modern myths and legends and where they came from, what their origin was inspired by, and how they shaped our culture. With me is Dr. Professor Ethan Watford. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good to have you. And we have local comic book Marvel fanboy Dan Barron. That is correct. I am the Marvel fanboy of the group. Although, a quick clarification, if I can. Uh, this show is not for boys and girls of all ages. This is rated M for mature. So if you happen to be under 18, make sure you have a parent or guardian nearby. That goes especially for you, my nephew, whose name I will not dox on the air. E for explicit. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me. I wanted to talk, um, we're filming this the weekend of uh, the, excuse me, of the parting of Chad Bosman. Um, Black Panther passed away this weekend. Yeah, Chad and Bosman. 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 Bosman, sorry, thank you. Yeah, um, and was, the, sorry, yeah. that's no, still, it's, that's it's, it's still, sucks. It's yeah, uh, man, fucking stings. The reason we yeah. kind of want to look at this, this isn't going to be like who could win in a fight, Batman versus Superman. We kind of want to look at where these icons came from and where they were inspired by in American history and how they affect our culture. Another thing that's been happening recently, DC just uh, summed up they're bringing back the creators that made Static Shock and also that creator is who's, these are all basically in the 90s, uh, black publishers and artists that wanted to make their own comic books and own heroes and DC just announced they're going to get a chance to do Batman, the full run, and they're making a Static Shock movie. And there's a lot of hate on the internet about it, of course, and kind of a For lot sure. of this of, of like what culture certain heroes and icons could be. So I figure it's more important than ever to kind of share some awesome things and look back at our history through these characters. Man, I got to say something before we begin. Uh, yeah. I know it's a little early to get on my soapbox, but um, I have <laughs> been a comic book fan um, almost my entire life. One of my early fond memories is uh, I can't remember the name of the shop now I think it was just called like East West Comic Connection in Fort Lauderdale something like that but it was near my dad's office so whenever uh, I didn't have school and I would go with him to work I would go and spend the day in the comic book shop like that was just who I was as a kid and I I have always loved comic books but man, the times that I've gotten really close to getting away from comic books, it has all been, it has not been because of the writers. It has not been because of the story arcs. It has absolutely been because of the fan base. Um, I, I, I love so many people I've met who are fans of comic books. Like Victor and I can debate comic books all day long. Yeah. Uh, we've had a long standing for the years we've known each other. We still don't have a conclusion on whether or not Spider-Man three is at least a decent movie. Um, I think <laughs> well, it's a it's decent not. film. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Um, but, but, uh, that fan base is incredibly toxic and I'm sure we'll get into it when we get into like later introductions, especially the fall of the ultimate universe and what came from that. Yeah. Um, I, I know that's on the docket, so I don't want to talk too much about it in advance, but, uh, man, guys, comic book fans, if you're listening to this, we are in the public zeitgeist. Now we are, we are pop culture to the extreme. Now people yeah. who were not fans of this stuff before are now becoming fans. So in a weird way, we're an ambassador to the work. So fucking clean up your act. No, yeah. Don't, don't, don't be incels. Don't be, don't be racist. Don't be misogynist. Don't, that's not worth it. That's not the point. You're, you're, you're devaluing the art form we all love. Sorry. Yeah, no, one needed needed to just... no, you're absolutely, that's why I wanted to do this I mean, one more because to me, this is uh, Americans like folklore and on a different level. And the issue with these are being, our, well, these are our Greek gods. Yeah, these are our Greek gods. Absolutely. These are like, like modern Paul Bunyans and things of that nature. And, they're kind of swirled in this toxic environment when someone asks something about it. People are like, well, you have to really read Long Halloween to really understand Batman. And it's like, no, that's bullshit. Like, and you, Dan, you answered my first question. What was your first intro into some of these characters? For me, it was uh, Superman 1978, like the movie. And then it was Batman the Animated Series. It made me fall in love with these characters. Like it wasn't even the comic books. It was later when I got older that I wanted to read my own comics, uh, that I did that early. And uh, a comic shop in Orlando was actually the first comic shop that I personally went into and talked to the staff. And they were really kind and showed me cool things. They showed me uh, Civil War, and that's why I got into it. They're like, oh, if you like are just jumping into all this, like absolutely grab this. This is a great jumping on point. And it was fucking stellar. 
Yeah. So for me, like I mentioned the the comic book shop, but for what really did it for me was the X-Men cartoon show. That X-Men right. cartoon show was everything to me. I loved it. And what got me reading comic books was I w- went to that shop and I was talking about the X-Men cartoon show. Because I think when I first went to the shop, I was looking for toys. Like that's really yeah. what I'm in the mood for. Uh, and the guy who worked at the shop was literally just like, oh, if you like the cartoon show, you need to read the Dark Phoenix storyline because it's completely different than the comic. It has a completely different ending. And I was like, oh, yeah, I would, you know what? Yes. And I literally, that was my first foray into comic books was reading the Dark Phoenix saga, which if you ask a comic book fan if they should start there, most people would probably say, no, don't start there. You, can, you can't start. Yes, you can. You can start anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. absolutely. Yeah. Anywhere. So what was your first early memory of like comic book other superheroes in any way it was a cartoon or a movie you're talking to, you're talking to me yeah <laughs> oh shit. yeah the doctor professor it spotlights on you my first foray in the comics was the iliad no i'm just kidding it was <laughs> um, uh it was 90s batman the animated series i watched it every day after school so, so fucking good and i know incredible. you're your brother was big into comics too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Credit where credit is due. Josh yeah. got, cause he was six years. He, he is six years older than me. So when he's 12, 13, uh, you know, I'm six, seven, eight. And so I just wanted to do whatever, you know, he was doing Yeah, And he yeah. was so into comic books and our dad bought us these big boxes of like eighties and early nineties comics mm with uh chef's kiss those are the ones it was incredible uh it was when catwoman got her own series yeah we had a bunch of those comics uh grew you guys remember grew not groot but it was like the the fat yeah 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 yeah. oh no i never heard that one so i was really into that one and then if you want to mention comics sorry characters that went away do you guys remember lobo what happened yeah. to Lobo? Oh, they keep trying to bring him back. He was on a TV show recently. Let him yeah. come back. He's a oh, biker he in space. I yeah. want him <laughs> everywhere. He should be central to the DCEU. Sorry. Anyway. So, oh, yeah. That, yeah. So, uh, that was, so, yeah, that was my big stepping off point. As I remember, Josh was watching Batman. So, I, of course, I watched Batman. X-Men. Basically, the 90s animated series. Yeah. Spider-Man. After yeah. Oh, yeah. Afternoons. It was so goddamn good. And so so that's when I started reading them is when I found out that these animated series were in fact comics. And I was like, what? And they've been around forever? And And I... I, that's what does it, man. It's 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 the yeah, same man. thing we're experiencing now. Like when I said that these these comics are in the zeitgeist, it's because now these movies, these movies are everywhere. Yeah, they are. Uh, and so you know when <laughs> I I remember so uh, college college for me was when I really expanded in comic books thanks to my college roommate Sean. He was uh, the the comic book super fan. If I had a question about a character, he knew everything about it. Like he he was the comic guy to me. Don't we always uh, still, have still one of those friends? Everyone, oh, absolutely, yeah. Everyone right. has one. You have to. Um, I've been that person for a few people now in yeah. my life. It's it's nice. Um, but yeah, they, so I remember when Marvel was announcing the movies, and I don't want to jump too far in the timeline because we have a lot to go over. But like as an example, the idea idea that marvel was starting with iron man was absolutely laughable to fans yes. because iron man was such a b-list yep. like not a nobody absolutely by any stretch of the imagination but not a not a heavy hitter and now i mean iron man is marvel to a lot of yeah. people yeah. and that's so it's so fascinating to me so I, fascinating my friend was a diehard comic book fan has some of the older classics and he was like i'm not seeing that and i saw it i was like you have to see it they do it right this isn't like a standalone thing like shields in this he's like what yeah. <laughs> yep. yep i uh i worked at a movie theater when iron man came out and i made a bet with some of my other like co-workers where i was super duper wrong and i was like this is gonna flop this is the biggest mistake they could make. No one gives a shit about Iron Man. Yeah. No one gives a shit about Robert Downey Jr. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> and then all these people kept showing up to the movie theater again yeah. and again and again. Yep. And it was like was the good. weirdest thing. The best, the best gamble Marvel ever made was throwing yeah. all their money behind that film. Like they yeah. they they threw 
everything into that film. If that film had flopped, there would be no Marvel anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or if, if Marvel existed, it would be Marvel as published by DC. Yeah. But it didn't flop. In fact, it did quite the opposite. It, the opposite. it, 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 it was a huge it hit. Changed changed film for all of us but yeah anyway sorry uh we know you're fine rest far too far from your timeline Victor. <laughs> so we're gonna start this with is, superman this is your show uh, um oh. we're gonna start with the first and or the most famous superhero there was we a have to yeah yeah we, I'll, I'll show you why you'll like the stand i promise a is lot of red people can it's not red sun no <laughs> because red sun explores what everyone wants from him for some reason everyone right now wants an edgy dark brooding superman when really, uh, it's really classic how he came about. Like the creators, Jerry uh, Siegel and Jill Schuster, he first appeared in Action Comics in 1938. But unlike other things that people had no faith in, that character was turned down for over five years. People turned that character down. They wrote what? it in 1932, and originally he was a sci-fi supervillain that got his powers from an accident and was able to jump and run really fast. Um, and they kept reworking and rewriting it over and over again. They finally, like, DC was like, hey, we'll put this in action comics, but, like, we'll pay you just a flat rate for it. You give us the rights. And they were so tired of getting a no to it that they were like, sure. And it outsold every – it was huge. Like, they basically got paid $130. Back then, it's equivalent to $2,000 now in our time, which is crazy. But he And they maintained none of the rights? They didn't, but they did get Oof. it back later. Okay. So, oh, yeah. So they end up working for them, and it becomes a big hit. They don't get the rights uh, later. Uh, the re- the way they get the rights, the Seagull served in World War II, and while he's at war, uh, they put out Superboy. So the Superboy cartoons people have known from back then. DC was like, "Yeah, let's just put out Superboy," and he's like, "What the fuck? No, that's my character." And he Superboy. wrote like basically the early version of Superman, like oh. uh, just being Smallville. Of, yeah, Smallville basically oh. like, had a dog and things. And nice. he sued them Crypto, over that. Crypto, the yeah, super Crypto dog. The super dog. <laughs> <laughs> but there was also a bat dog. Don't be mistaken. Fun fact: When Superman was around, he did not fly or have uh, heat vision. Uh, he was very tame as far as powers go. And so right. he was a radio show in the 1940s, and this is where he becomes more relevant. During the radio show, they gave him his extra powers, like heat vision, freeze ray, faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah. But also what they did, which is really what? awesome, is Superman fought the Klan during this radio series. Yeah. During the time the Ku Klux Klan was getting a lot of revenue and streaming, Fuck people yeah. were like, hey, we got to really expose this because it's a fucking pyramid scheme. Um, so they did a radio show where he exposes the Klan, takes them out. Basically, an Asian American family is moving into Metropolis and the Klan puts a cross on their thing. This is 1940, by the way. This is kind of nuts. They do this on the radio show. And the radio show actually affected Klan membership. In the town, because people are like, oh, holy shit, this is a scheme. Because the main villain in the show, in the, the main clan leader, was basically pissed that this guy was going to bomb a school because he was like, do you understand? Don't believe the shit we're selling them. We just need the $100 memberships and the $25 for the robes that we get. This funds our real plan to stop Superman. Like, and I highly recommend, I just read Superman Smashes the Clan, which is a reinterpretation of that radio show. And it's golden age Superman learning his background and everything, but it's about the immigrant story. That's what Superman really represents is coming to America, an orphan and being an alien, feeling not wanted, but trying to fit in and be better and make essentially like the world a better place, a human yeah. a better example for that. That's what he's always kind of represented. And it gets lost in a lot of the mythology that he can't, that he's like impenetrable and everything like that one really has abandonment issues and imposter syndrome constantly. Damn. But that's the coolest thing to me when that's I found incredible. out that, it, that a show actually affected real world change in our country based on what they did because he was such an icon at the time. Anyone wow. who studied art, doesn't matter what the art form is, the biggest thing you, you learn to realize is that art really does affect culture far more than anything else uh, yeah. it, it, when, when it comes from a real place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it's when it's not like uh, paid marketing, uh, now you can you can fucking move mountains if you convince people with a story with a narrative that that something is is different than what they've been told. Yeah. And, damn, it's yeah. a damn shame. That's the only time that's ever happened in history. That's it. The only time <laughs> no one's ever. It's not about another ever. public figure that was showing the American way. We'll switch it over to the Marvel side to Captain America. Well, uh, first off, not Marvel. At this point, we're talking timely comics. If we're talking oh, Captain sorry. America, we're talking timely. 
because uh, the original Captain America, while created by, it was Jack Kirby and, oh shit, it wasn't Stan Lee, which is the common misconception. I it was George Patton, Patton did it. It was General Again? George Patton. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Patton and Kirby. <laughs> no, uh, Joe Simon. Joe Simon and Jack Kirby uh, created Captain America for Timely Comic. Uh, and more specifically, uh, as an effort to help sell war bonds. So it was the equivalent of a USO show uh, on the page, hey, right? Like, that's what they were really like going for. That's movie. why. Yeah, like the movie fucking the nailed movie. that. I love that so they much. <laughs> the that's his original costume. <laughs> yeah. I love I love that in the movie, they made a point of making him into a propaganda machine because that is what the character was created. Yeah, that was for. wild. Yeah. And that's it. Like, the first issue is him, the cover is him punching Hitler in the face, right? Like, there is, there is no uh, hiding what they were making Captain America to be. Captain America was there to capitalize on a jingoist society that we were currently in the midst of, which was, uh, and this is going to sound really foreign to any of you uh, um, in our generation or younger, uh, but there was a period in time where America was asked to make sacrifices for the greater good, and they did it. Um, yeah. with, with some Here. grumbling, sure, you know, like there was, there was definitely some discomfort, but they ultimately did it and felt a sense of national pride about it. Um, it's, it's oh, weird. Exotic. I don't, wow. I don't quite understand that, but, um, that's where Captain America came from. So it was, it was literally, it was, I hate to say this, but it was a cash grab. It was absolutely a cash yeah. grab in, in the beginning, not necessarily just for the comic book, but for the government. And then hopefully in timely comics is mind. Uh, the government would then help them to continue publication. Uh, Captain America didn't change into that uh, man out of time until Stan Lee got involved with the character. Um, and, and arguably that is when Captain America uh, became, I mean, what he is now. Because uh, there, so one of the, ready, a little piece of comic book trivia for those of you who've watched the movies but didn't read the comics, and that's okay. Captain America was not the first Avenger. Uh, Captain America was not even a member of the Avengers when the Avengers first came about. The Avengers yeah. were Iron Man, uh, Hank Pym, Janet Pym, Hulk, and Hawk. No, not Hawkeye. Uh, and was it Vig? Who am I missing? Fuck. Thor? Did you already say Thor? Thor. Thank Thor you. Was yes, yeah, Thor. Thor was in there. Um, so that was the original Avengers. Captain America didn't join until later, but when he did join under Stan Lee's like leadership, he became the leader of the team. He was the obvious, like the, the military mind. Um, and and so explain it, that's why they froze him. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's why they froze right. him at the end of world war two. That's why they, they, they kind of built that idea. Cause there was this long gap where there was no real Captain America comic. Um, that's why they killed Bucky. That's why they did all this stuff to give him these, these levels because originally Captain America and Bucky again, just served as a way to sell the books. That was it. They were yeah. just, they were just there to capitalize. It was, Hey, what gets the kids picking these things up off the newsstand when they stop by the news kiosk on the street, what, what gets them to buy it? Yeah. Let's have a red, white, and blue fella punching Hitler right in the kisser. Yeah. You know, it was, <laughs> and then these, they also followed suit with DC. They had Superman doing the same thing. They also, why none of these movies ever go to the Eastern Front is there's very stereotypical depictions of Asians, of Japanese soldiers. Uh, More specifically, if I may, uh, one of my favorite. So if you've ever watched the old Superman cartoon show, which I have, my grandfather used to watch it with me all the time because it was a thing that we could relate together on. Um, There is an episode that I encourage everyone to watch. It is um, incredibly offensive by today's standards, but it really helps you understand um, where boomers got this from. Uh, it is an episode called The Japa Tours. Uh, and it is, about, yeah. uh, it is about Japanese secret agents who have infiltrated American industry. Uh, and oh, uh, no. there is literally a scene where the Japanese man is is talking to a coworker in his American office, and when the uh, the other person walks out, he presses a button on the wall, and his framed painting of the Statue of Liberty 
he turns into the, I think it's the Japanese flag or a picture of the emperor of Tojo. Was it Tojo yeah. at the time? Anyway, um, <laughs> but like that he bows to it, but it was all, it was all the stereotypical. Yeah. Like they have, they have the, 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 oh, the all of it is drawn to be that caricature. It's awful. Ooh. And Yikes. at the time, that was fully acceptable. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's real bad now. It's it's ugly now. Very ugly now. But that's why it's important to learn that's where it came. That's why I want to point out that's where it came from. Um, and it's not something to be like, oh, we're ashamed of it or we cancel Captain America. It's just that character also reflects on his time throughout in many stories, too, of like what it's like. He's this person literally jumps straight into the 60s from World War II era and lost so much of his life. And in the movies, they do a great job of showing he's lost even more. Yeah. So going for World oh, War II. I was so happy. Side note, I was so happy they went with the um, the Ultimates wake up of Captain America with the like where they tried to make it look like maybe he was still in his own time. Oh, wow. That was, like that, in. Yeah. that was from the Ultimate Comics, except in the Ultimate Comics, uh, the reason Cap figures out that he is uh, not, it's not real uh, is for a much more racist reason, uh, which is when Nick Fury walks into the room and introduces himself as a uh, a colonel, I think he introduced himself as, Captain America basically punches him. It's just like, there are only two black colonels in the U.S. military, and I know both of them. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <not> like, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but I was very glad they they went that route because what? What a what a great wake up! That sorry, I could fanboy about these. No, you're all fine. Day. That's what I want to talk about. And the I know we're talking about all the guys superheroes, and we want to bring up the first uh, famous female superhero. There were other ones before, but Wonder Woman is clearly the icon. In 1941, she came out. Um, her creator, she came out in Wonder <laughs> Sensational Comics 1942, which I thought she was like. I don't know why I didn't think she was that old. She was with there with the classics back in the golden age. I was never a Wonder Woman fan. I was, I, I, yeah, comic I'm wise, sexist, I've never so, been. You know, I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to agree with you there. <laughs> no, I just never got into DC. It took me a long time to get into DC in my life. So I like her in their current, cur- like how she is right now. What they've done with her is fantastic because she is like, in D- for D&D fans, she is the barbarian class, but also royalty. So it's like a noble background with a barbarian. Um, yeah. and just it's she's also that person out of time because she's like a Greek mythology hero put in a present day, um, which is awesome. And I think I didn't really get I always see her in like I'll read Justice League or things like that, but like the animated series where she's in strikes more to me, um, is where they show the impact of that. And also the movie not being that great, I will say, but there's there's a real He's important thing for there. No, I he was a big I, fan for a while, and I said, eh, it was okay. It was, I know. I said the third act was bad. I, third I always act say was that. The third act is terrible. It's a CGI monster fight. They all do that for some dumb reason. Um, but what she represents is huge, though. I think that's the other thing, though. Like, that's important to get there. Like, Captain Marvel, same thing. Okay movie, but what she represents and what that means for a lot of women out there and little yeah. girls, huge. Like, Ooh, Captain Marvel, though, had uh, a way more impactful feminism moment in my opinion, uh, than Wonder Woman did, which is at the end with Jude Law, like being like, I always said that if you could beat me without your powers, yeah. you have proven your, and he starts like going through his film yeah. and she just blasts him in the wall with yeah. the, I don't have to prove anything to you. Yeah. Yes. I love that. That's that was beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Wonder Woman, we got to see her fight a CGI, uh, Remus Lupin. Yep. <laughs> and so Chris, Chris Pine was there. He was there. The he best was. part of Wonder Woman is her running through no man's land. That's it. That that part's yeah. spectacular. But that even was then, really cool. it should have been that should have been the whole movie. The whole movie should have been her on the lines of World War One. Like but yes, what a, yes, I will say that. But it, it's still that thing, that imagery though, that you have to look at. Like that's the first female they've done that with. Like DC at least jumped the gun and went straight to that. Marvel Captain Marvel is like what number eleven or twelve in the Marvel movie line before they did that. It's, yeah, yeah, sure, but Captain Marvel is a more recent phenomenon in the Marvel yeah. comics. Like she is she is the new face of the Avengers, or was at that time. Sure. Um, yeah. Whereas before she was, they 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 didn't have a lot to go off of. I mean, they they've had many Captain Marvel oh. stories and a lot of Miss Marvel stories, um, but none that could have pulled a film. I also got right. lost in the in the movie fight. Sorry, folks. I did want to bring up in World War II, she was basically fighting the Axis military forces. And along with the other big heroes, so that's the other big thing. She was part of that big movement as well. Oh, that not even right. not it's not just Superman and Captain America punching Nazis. Wonder Woman is as well. 
during it. New Frontier is a great comic or animated movie if you want to see mm -hmm. that Wonder Woman. It's a great depiction of her basically liberating a village in the Pacific East, or Pacific East, um, in one of the islands off Japan. And she did it by basically empowering the women of the village to take over. Oh. Her. Yeah, so it's a really Neat. cool like depiction of that. And she's basically like, uh, also she's not... 90s comic woman figured out she's like a full figured woman in that version too so she's like a realistic body not just like the crazy depiction she's had before Whew. but she is yeah. women, play, so. women in comic books have always had an unfortunate uh, go of it yeah it's the boob armor joke like they're yeah uh, why why do i have yep <laughs> yeah bronze this and nothing else on me i just ha okay that's great it's, it's oh yeah i'm wearing a broads bra that's yeah, probably effective for a that's gun effective fight. For, yeah <laughs> it's clearly it's clearly drawn by and for people who have never seen a naked woman ever yes so they're in like, fact honestly uh, <laughs> i i had some misconceptions about the female body as a child because of comics <laughs> just like wait where are the intestines where are the <laughs> <laughs> what and then also <laughs> go ahead, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and another character uh, popular during this time in 1939 is uh, Batman. So this is when Batman first came oh. out. Wow. Well, well, but we're talking like Detective we're, Batman. We're talking Detective Comics. Love it. Was DC Comics is Detective Comics Comics, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Detective Comics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's... <laughs> Detective it's Comics. Basically, comics. They, uh, when inspired by Superman, they're like, I want him to have like bat wings, and he originally had a domino mask, uh, and then they evolved him later to wear purple gloves so he wouldn't leave fingerprints. So he was like a detective that would go into crime scenes. It wasn't the average like fight by day superhero that you saw. So he was something. Right. He was our Sherlock Holmes. He was the yeah. he was the Sherlock inspired Holmes of by the comic Zorro book as world. well. And Zorro, yep. the novels inspired both uh, Superman and Batman to have alter egos, and he was a bat. He was, he, was he was a bat. Batman. He was a bat. He and we'll get more into bat, that when Batman man. gets cooler because basically through this age, he's during World War II, he has Robin and they're doing after school specials at the end of the comic of don't He do has drugs. a real original series of Star Trek feel to him. And we're not yeah. about that on this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spoilers for what may come. I am here. I am here for it. At the end of the day, Batman is a dude dressed as a bat. And there's no getting around it. And I love Batman. But this you don't have to explain a, his origin. <laughs> this motherfucker is a bat, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's silly. At least, least Spider-Man has an excuse. He was bit by a spider. He's not trying to look like a spider. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Superman, he is a Superman. Wonder Woman, she is a Wonder Woman. Captain exactly. America, he is an American captain. <laughs> he, is an, he is an American captain. <laughs> Batman. He was bitten a by a captain. Dressed as a bat. He's a rich guy who dresses as a bat. And solves mysteries. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Fights clowns. Yeah. And penguin men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's silly, you know? And we'll one, of his villains, one of his villains is, the, is that fucking guy from the late night uh, infomercial, the guy who wears question mark jackets. <laughs> like fucking also for condiment like, king and calendar man. Oh, don't yeah, forget the real heroes. <laughs> That's you can get some really good achievements in uh, Arkham City if you remember to talk to Calendar Man on specific holidays. What? <laughs> yeah, it's an Easter egg in the game. He, he will yeah. say different messages to you on different holidays. Damn. Yeah, time to well, go back to up. Arkham City. It's time, time, to, time to play the game Let's again. Let's jump to the fun part of comics. <laughs> to the early 60s where the Marvel Revolution happened. Uh, 1962, yeah. Spider-Man. Silver Hulk, Age. Iron Man, Daredevil, Nick Fury, The Mighty Thor, Avengers... Um, Ant-Man, Quicksilver. So this is where Marvel takes over as or because DC's still doing the like, remember kids, only you could say no to drugs and not the drug stuff that comes later, but just they were very much your parents' superheroes at this time. They were very robotic and um, still coming off of like fighting the war and having like a just little adventures. If you can think of it, Batman 66 is a perfect way or the Super Friends cartoon is exactly how these heroes in DC were going. Marvel, it was serialized. Yeah. Everything was serialized. Everything was, it was done perfect. at the end of it. And then yeah. Marvel was doing interesting stories that took place not in a made-up realm, but actually in New York City. And it had controversial characters like the Hulk. And the reason the Hulk's controversial is during the 60s is Hulk's villain is the U.S. Army. It is not a, yeah, it's not a made-up thing or anything. He is uh -oh. fighting the man. 
That is the Hulk. The Hulk is a Rage Against the Machine, literally. Hell yeah. Or any of that stuff had it on there. And they also had different, uh, the Daredevil as well as going through different things. I don't Daredevil. Uh, we, if we're going to talk Daredevil, too. we save that for the 80s. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's another. We talk Frank Miller. Miller. Yeah. But uh, I want to talk about Spider Man and why it became so popular. And Ethan, I want to throw to you as well for that. And everyone has, I mean, Spider Man is the most famous superhero like we can i think he is at this because point because anyone can literally wear that mask he is not a rich billionaire he's not an alien um he is a kid like you and me who as we said earlier got bit by a spider and had these powers and also yeah. he's a real life superhero with real problems he has to pay rent he has this yeah. old aunt he has to take care of he has homework due before like he gets in a deep fight and sometimes his homework gets fucked up and he's screwed like he has these real conundrum problems that people could relate to or a billionaire, you might not be able to relate to the fact that he's just fighting crime the whole time. And in comics, they didn't really show those real world struggles. They were role models. This was the first hero to be like, shit, like fu- he fucked up a lot. And they yeah. showcase that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the thing that my dad talked about with Spider-Man when he was first getting me and my brother introduced to comic books is exactly what you just talked about, Victor. And it's that these superheroes... Uh, and Spider-Man specifically, but a lot of them, like the Hulk as well, they had real problems and their powers were also their curses yeah. in a lot of way. And uh, there were real life lessons that come with it that weren't just like the super friends where it's like, you know, yeah. both ways before crossing the street. With Spider-Man, he's dealing with his identity. He's dealing with these interpersonal problems, these interpersonal relationships with people where he can't reveal who he is. So especially in the 1960s and forward, that speaks to the LGBTQ community. That speaks to anyone with maybe a mental disorder, a physical disorder that they're trying to hide, that they can't reveal to someone else. Um, And so it was a wonderful, it's a wonderful allegory for people who those disabilities can be, their abilities, I guess, where they can use it as a strength and they can use it for good rather than hiding it away and pretending it doesn't exist. Yeah, representation is huge. The reason uh, for me that I loved as a kid growing up Superman and Cyclops was I wore big giant glasses and I hated it when I was young because it was not the cool thing at all to have big nerdy glasses when you're in like the 90s. No, Um, it was not. It was not. Cyclops to me was my favorite because he was the superhero with glasses all the time. And I thought who could cool. not take them off. He yeah. was he had to leave them on uh, mm-hmm. because he had basically world ending powers behind his eyes that were only kept behind this ruby lens. Yeah, yeah no, that's Peter Parker. I never even thought about that. Powers was like, oh, fuck this. I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> and and an- another thing with Spider-Man versus like Batman and Superman is Spider-Man is essentially a kid. He's yeah. in yeah. high school or college. He's very young. Oh, I, I know I've talked about this on the show before because this is not our first time diving into Spider-Man, but that is one of my favorite moments or fallout uh, of Civil War is <laughs> in Civil War, yeah. uh, Spider-Man reveals on TV that he's Peter Parker and he was 16 years old when he first got bitten. And one of the follow-up issues uh, was Peter Parker is a professor at this point and he's teaching a class uh, and in the middle of his lecture, Dr. Octopus breaks through the wall in his underwear and is just screaming, you mean to tell me my greatest nemesis was a child? Yeah. And it was spectacular. So, so good. So classic. In that panel too, Flash Thompson is watching the news and just drops his drink because it's yep. like both the person he hates and the person he loves are the same person because he's the biggest Spider-Man fan. Yeah. Oh, so good. But yeah, no, I mean, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, because in this era, this is also when we introduce X-Men. Um, yes. and, and, but I, I, I don't want to talk about them yet because if we're talking Silver Age X-Men, this is, we're not in the Chris Claremont era yet. And, and notably, Stan Lee has admitted many times that uh, the X-Men, originally he created mutants not because of some social reason, but because he was really getting sick of coming up with origins for powers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
he he wanted to make something easier so he could just like pump out more characters um and and I, their significance came through story and and so we'll get there but spider-man especially in the beginning was so unique because of these little touches of humanity but yeah. also because he was you you can't read superman and feel like superman no. you can't you cannot do it just like victor said you can't relate to these people you can relate to peter parker yeah. you you and and beyond that this was also at the time where you were seeing their thoughts which comic books kind of went away from um so even more so you related with with spider-man and wished you could be more like him yeah. in your life because you saw that he would think the same thing you were he was terrified of these moments but the words that would come out of his mouth were always brave or funny right yeah. like he he always yeah. knew how to put on the right face to to you know be a hero which is a lesson is something that you can take into your everyday life uh mm -hmm. and and that's why arguably I, I I don't think that there really is a contest. I think Spider-Man hands down is the most popular superhero of all time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh yeah, man. Because everyone can be him. Um, there's no like ra no races involved or even gender at this point. There's multiple spider women uh, yeah. throughout the timeline, either if it's his daughter in the future or spider Gwen or everything they've done with that. Um, but also I love the fact that- Did you that just pull an Earth X? Yeah. <laughs> Reference, my God. Deep cut. Uh, you mentioned his daughter I in the Heather future. Was. And I'm just, I was like, wait, hold on. Are we talking his symbiote daughter? Go ahead. Sorry. We're all, no, we're all, I've looked up before. I went through a uh, day where I went through like, Wiki, I researched the shit out of this for this episode, but I was looking through a lot of Wikipedia. I had to stop because it was like, man, the clone saga and then the ultimate clone saga just fuck things up. And there's so many spider people. I'm, I'm going to back away from this. But man, the clone, saga, it, the clone saga sucked, but God, the Ben Riley costume was just the best. Yeah. The Scarlet Spider it costume was. is just the best goddamn yes. costume. You, you know why it's it sucks? It was supposed to be just like a two part episode. And they're like, this yeah. is selling. And they kept going. And they're like, we don't know where this ends. <laughs> they were just like, keep doing it. Just it's selling <laughs> like hotcakes. Yeah. There's always there's always business behind these things. That is the yeah. lesson to everybody. Is anytime a comic book or a movie has gone off the rails, I promise you it is not because of the artists behind it. It is typically because of the money men. But yeah. Oh, Spider-Man. Also in Earth X, that's where you get to see Spider-Man. Uh, he's a cop at this point. Peter Parker's a cop. Uh, and uh, when shit starts hitting the fan in that comic, uh, he doesn't fit into his old spider costume anymore because he's an overweight cop. So he goes and grabs a Spider-Man costume from a Halloween shop and goes into battle in that in basically a rip-off Spider-Man costume that says Spider-Man across the front. Perfect. <laughs> it's spectacular. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> And I do want to bring up uh, Black Panther briefly, but we'll save that yeah. for later. Basically, he was invented during the 60s. Um, and what Stan Lee's quote about it, uh, he's the he's the first black superhero in American mainstream comic books. And basically, Stan Lee was like, I knew multiple, I worked with multiple black people and we didn't have one. He appeared in Fantastic Four 52. Um, the reason he has his costume, though, kind of sucks. Uh, so he used to look like Batman. Like he had an open cowl where you could see his mouth and nose, but Marvel was really hesitant of just putting like, uh, he's on the title and it's 19, you know, and I believe it's pull it up here. Yeah. It's like, it's early, It's like middle sixties when he comes out and they were unsure of having that at the front. So they covered up his face completely. Um, we're shout out in benefit because the costume looks stellar because of that. But yeah, yeah but yeah. It, it it sucks knowing why. Yeah, it sucks but, knowing why. But it's it's part of it too. Why like, I think the coolest thing they did with him is that he is not just like, um, unlike other like Luke Cage, for instance. Unfortunately, doesn't hold up during that time because he came out shortly after. Is he has some very black exploitation lingo because it's all white guys writing these characters still. But T'Challa comes from Africa and is a king. And he kind of has the phantoms basically origin a little bit. Like the Black Panther is always taken up from the sun. So people, his enemies think he's eternal, but really he's like, that's a father son tradition passed down. Yeah. That was really cool. But we'll dive more into that. Cause I think. Phantoms. 
My God, you brought the Phantom into this. Oh, I, as a Christ. '90s kid, I love the Phantom. I was so excited that movie about was that. Trash. It was trash. <laughs> I, I loved that movie. 1996. Too. That's like it was all about superheroes, like Batman. Forever. Were you also excited for the Spawn movie before it came oh, out? Oh yeah, yes. because Spawn was the comic. I was. My dad was like, "You're not reading this shit." Like he got so mad that my. Uh, a relative in the family gave me a Spawn comic and like a Venom comic. And he was like, no, absolutely not. You're not reading this. Like 90s comics ruined that stuff for me to get it earlier. So of course, in, uh, when I'm in high school, I get it on my own. Spawn was brilliant because they figured out the easiest well, way to sell their comic books is to put them with the toys. That was everybody <laughs> copied that game for a while. Yeah. I mean, I Spawn is that. literally just Venom with machine guns and a cool cape play. That's it. <laughs> with Ghost Rider's origin story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to hell. Whoa. But also, also really cool, it, a, a black superhero as well, and that's really noted because, mm -hmm. like the early '90s, that's when when I was talking earlier about uh, Powerline comics. That's important because, like, that's where Static Shock to a lot of kids in the '90s. That's like their Spider-Man. Static Shock is yeah. a teenage superhero. That an explosion happens, and he has he's basically a Magneto, but with lightning powers added on top of that. He can mm -hmm. control metal and. For me, I was I saw him in the WB Kids show, and a lot of kids yeah. did well. So that yeah. was there, like Spider Man. He was quippy. Um, he also was dealing with real world problems as well as a kid as a kid in high school, still being a superhero, and mm -hmm. was shown in the Justice League as always that. Like he's their Spider Man equivalent, I would say, closest to that. Yeah. But we'll jump back into Black Panther later and his impact throughout everything, and we'll go into the X Men. And then, yeah. and that'll be yeah, our transition from golden age, silver to eighties comics will be the fun stuff. Well, so importantly, the death of the silver age, uh, it ties right to Spider-Man. Anyone who talks about the ages of, of comic books, if, if we're talking about when the silver age became the bronze age, when it went to the eighties grit, it is all because Marvel decided to pull the trigger and kill Gwen Stacy. Right, the death of oh, Gwen wow. Stacy uh, yeah. is considered by everyone the end of the Silver Age because that was the first time that a hero, a failed to save his loved one, and b was also possibly responsible for their death directly. Yeah, um, and so like that is that is really the end of the Silver Age. That is when comic books all of a sudden had to have consequences. That is what inspired that 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 almost Frank Miller esque movement. Of like, you know, hey, we we can have these heroes take on a very different tone. And so that also brings us into Chris Claremont and the X-Men. Because before, again, before Chris Claremont, um, and, and, and there were touches of it, like there was always this mutant phobia that was kind of present in, in the comic books. But Chris Claremont really flushed these characters out into so much more and made the mutant phobia... Whether whether you understood racism, whether you understood ra or religious discrimination, whether you understood, um, you know, the 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 plight of the LGBTQ, like it, whatever it was, you could look at the X Men and see yourself, or see yeah. that group, see a marginalized group of people who yeah. are just trying to do good, and ultimately, we're doing good for everyone. Um, but their obstacles were always a the bad guys, and then b the small-minded people who who were being saved by them. Um, yeah, which is genius because as a kid, the yeah. show taught me that so early on, which is like, yeah. why do they hate them? And I always never got the movies. I feel try to capture that enough, but it's always like, why does why does everyone hate Hugh Jackman? Like I don't, well, I don't get it. It's like because it's different. Um, but I, well, and, and I, am I wrong? Is, did Stanley not base Charles Xavier and Magneto against Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, or is that later they kind of that was later that, that, that okay. kind of got supplemented? Like, if you if you read the original comic books, Magneto was not a Brotherhood of Mutants kind of guy. He uh, was a a twirl his mustache villain. villain like he okay. was, yeah, uh, he's robbing it, the bank again, and they're stopping him. <laughs> yeah, and so it, it came later, and I don't actually know when they added in Magneto origin story as well that might have been um ever present but like that i i having having magneto your main villain be a holocaust survivor which is arguably someone who universally and and of course we are subtracting subhumans uh from this equation uh universally um um, understood as as a victim, as somebody that you know deserves uh, a, a pity and empathy. 
Uh, yeah. Making your main villain survive something like that automatically to me, made the story so much deeper because, yeah, you wanted them to foil Magneto's plan, but at the same time, you're always hoping that he'll see the light or that he'll see the irony of his actions Yeah, because there, there was something redeemable in there. There was a good man in there who the world made cruel. Yes. Um, and so that's, that's what's so fascinating about X-Men is it's mutants. It's this idea of the next step of human evolution, right? But yeah. they, they arguably are going through the most human struggle of them all, which is the struggle to fit in. Um, yep. And they've, they've, they've found their own tribe. They have their school where they can practice, you know, away from prying eyes. They can have this secret life where they can kind of feel normal. But the minute they have to step away from that school and they have to do that frequently, the minute they do it, they are treated like monsters just yeah. because of something they couldn't control. Yeah. And there, there is such a, there's such a compelling human, humanistic story there. Uh, I cannot... I cannot wait to see this franchise in the hands of Kevin Feige and the MCU because yeah, look, yeah. I I love I love X Men One, Two, uh, First Class, and Days of Future Past. Those are four excellent films made by a rapist. So unfortunately, we can't yeah by a, a real life there. monster. Jesus, by a real life yeah. monster. Thanks, Brian Singer. You can't just let us have fucking nice things. You had to be a goddamn monster. Um, <laughs> But but spectacular films, and I, I find it very difficult uh, where I stand on that because there's a lot more than just a director involved with a film, and I wouldn't want to punish these actors for uh, yeah. anyway. Because he evolved it into something right more modern where it was about, um, mm -hmm. like, I almost just said gay rights. Like, I meant, like, just equal well, rights for everyone. Yeah, but it was about yeah. being that. Like, it, it very, the films definitely have that tone, especially that they came out in 2000. Like, that yeah. really early tone of, like, where... Iceman brother turns him in and, and that family kind of disowns him there. It's just that of that, like, oh, you're gay. Like it was very, well, yeah. like it was think, portal, It was putting it in your face in the right way of like, this is what this is. is the thing. first, is the first episode of the X-Men cartoon show literally opens with Jubilee's parents calling uh, uh, sentinels into their neighborhood yeah. because their daughter is a mutant. Like, yeah. And and we know if Crazy. you read the comics that Sentinels are are murder machines, but like the average person wouldn't know that. And that was literally supposed to be that that point of like, hey, you don't know what you're what you're doing to these other people by ostracizing them. Yes. You may think that you're doing the right thing by your moral conscience, but in reality you're making them different. And by making them different, you're making them a victim. Yep. Ugh, man, X-Men, X-Men, there is some I highly recommend anybody out there who wants to read a really good X-Men run um, that you don't have to know a lot to get into, but you really get a feel for what X-Men is, look up Grant Morrison's new X-Men. Uh, to me, that is one of the best arcs that has ever been done. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's spectacular. Oh my God. Uh, you, you look it up, get it on Comixology or wherever, anywhere, if you can find it read that comic because they also introduce the, they introduce a very central conflict in victimhood, which is the competing victimhoods. So um, wow. this is, the, so there is a character introduced in this uh, called Kid Omega. And Kid Omega is just a student at the school whose powers rival Professor Xavier's. They are very close to his level of like mental ability. Um, and Kid, uh, Kid Omega does not believe in Xavier, Xavier's method, but is also not a student of Magneto. So it's not just this like, oh, mutant supremacy or, you know, uh, you know mutant help. Uh, it is this other thing where it's like, no, we are oppressed and we need to stand up uh, and we need to take to the streets. It's almost like he wants a French revolution, right? And so yeah. it, it yeah. creates this, this rift within Xavier's, um, which is such a good read it, it yeah, yeah. It, it is a great comic and introduces some really great uh storylines it's also where gene gray came back um, hey. after the long run of being gone so yeah highly 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 recommend although that is a 2000s comic and we are talking x-men 80s here so i'm sorry i'm jumping all around no uh, you're fine yes, x-men <laughs> spectacular just as a spectrum as a whole because north star the notes i had for diversity kitty pride is the first jewish american openly jewish superhero during this time as well and i and also uh we have north star the first openly gay character 
and later in the recent comics, Iceman has now opened, like, has come out as well. And that's huge, mm-hmm. I think, for kids to see that and read that, like, to have that represent. The mutants have always represented, like, there's it's that teenage, like, uh, going through puberty stage two, or also people discovering, like, oh, am I bi, am I gay? Like, that aspect of it is what anyone can relate to that or if you're different in some way or yeah. going through any type of disability, there's a hero for you there. Like, as I said, for me, it was, like, Cyclops, and it's, like, a stupid thing to look at now, but as a kid, it was, like, like during gym class, I had to put on stupid goggles to like play basketball and stuff. Like I had to do that based on whatever. And that's like a, a thing that made me feel more confident with that, that and Horace Grant. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so another, another well. side on that, just to, I mean, to that same note, like another really important central character to the X-Men universe, Storm. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Cuz Storm so it's really easy if you if you've only had um side influence or or only seen the X-Men movie, it's easy to assume okay, Storm was a black woman on the team. But if you read the comic books, Storm for the longest time was the leader of the team. She was in yeah, charge. She was a badass. Like, as it a was, kid, it I was, thought she was in charge. Yeah. It was always between her and Scott Summers. They were always having a power struggle on who was really in yeah. charge on the team. And what was interesting about that struggle is I, as a kid, was rooting for Cyclops, but it wasn't because he was a white man. It was because we were arguing about power sets, where I was just like, yeah, he would just blast her out of the sky. Her, her yeah. wind's not going to knock his optic beam out of the way. So, like, we were in a weird way also being taught about um, uh, uh, affirmative action uh, yeah, it, it, like, but like in that positive light of like, no, 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 judge by merit, judge by merit. Like, yeah. Also, Jean Grey by merit. is also like one of the most powerful thing beings in that universe, and is a woman. Like that's the other thing as well. Like comics have had powerful women in there throughout. Exit. Like we talked about Wonder Woman and things like that. But that's huge for people to see. And I think it's that's why I liked what we talked about earlier in the episode. Is when you gatekeep this, like when someone's like, well, it's not really this or you don't know the character because of that if someone's into something because they saw captain marvel the movie and that's their only thing show them some good storylines with story yeah, dude. On the characters gene may not be i think dan's about to correct that i I, I i just want to <laughs> i don't think gene gray is a great example of female empowerment um only because uh she she is given great power by a cosmic entity in the universe uh, and then uh, has what is a pretty stereotypical uh, anti-feminist. Uh, what's the what's the term they would have loved to have used for a woman who can't control her emotions? Oh, her emotions. Yeah, that's I think you're right. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so uh, while while there is something good to it, and the more modern era has interpreted uh, Phoenix into something a lot better than what it was ultimately what they were doing was oh look she got this great power but because of her emotion she can't, she can't control, control it, it. <laughs> shucks so yeah that was not the best sorry sorry to oh, all the two great totally fans out there fine. who uh had her as your feminist icon she oh, if you want. actually victor <laughs> <laughs> That's my interpretation. I, I could be wrong. I, you know, I, no, I would you're love absolutely, to be like, wrong. There, again, the issue is like the, like most of these comics are still written by the same people or the same type of groups. And it's not till now that they get more diverse. Like you have uh, Kamala Khan, who's Miss Marvel. She's yeah. about to star in the Avengers video game. And who she is is huge because she's a big fangirl of the comics of Miss Marvel. And she is one of the first, I believe she's Palestinian. Uh, superheroes she basically gets she's an inhuman so it's like marvel was like let's double down on the whole born with powers thing and there's mutants and inhumans and she has basically like mr fantastic powers she can get big and stretch and she's inspired by captain marvel so much she becomes miss marvel and Mm -hmm. marvel put her in the comics that way like i believe it's just 10 years ago that they put yeah they put this character in there in in like the limelight which is huge because i mean it's not I mean, we can pretend we progress as much as we can, but 2000, like 9-11 still has, we have a bunch of phobias for anyone that looks brown or has a funny accent or from maybe right. Middle Eastern descent, right? And to put a hero at that level is huge and it to is. show that someone is helping that way. And I think x Men's always great for that representation too because the government's also the bad guy there. The Sentinels are a voted for thing by a senator. Like this yeah, is they're thing sanctioned. The people, yeah, they're sanctioned. It's not an illegal private task force it's that people fear change and fear what's different and i think it's good to learn those lessons early and to kind of point those things out because those are always relevant no matter what age we're in 
Yeah, but enough about all these different people. Victor, let's bring it back to a white man. Tell me about Batman in the 80s. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, the, yeah, I almost skipped that. I almost just jumped to the black. I forgot. I know. I, I could feel I, that you were yeah, getting ready to I jump to the modern it. era. But oh, no. I, 80s oh, man. Batman. So, what do you guys think of 1980s Reagan America? Do you think everything was great? Uh, like, yeah. right? We're fighting the commies. We're bringing down the Berlin Wall. Everything's uh, fine. Right? Sure. Everything's fine. Great. Everything's on the Economic same team. boom. We're winning gold, you know. No, there's no strife here. There's no crack epidemic. We're not dealing there's with There's no forced police. jingoism. Right? There's none of that yeah. wrong. I remember you that. read a Frank Miller book. You get to experience real fucking awesome Batman. Uh, Batman Year One is one I want to start out with because yes. he is not a just do gooder detective that t- him and Commissioner Gordon have a beer after work. No. Uh, Commissioner Gordon is a lieutenant and is dealing with a very corrupt police department and dealing with the mob as well. And Batman is a vigilante hardcore. So they are both fighting cops during this. And you get to see his origin of he's not just a bill. This is where you get the Batman Begins covers that verbatim. Like he goes and studies around the world, gives away his fortune, comes back, um, starts striking fear in the hearts of ter- like criminals and bring it to them their style. That's where he's like punching people to fit, like using scare tactics and not torture, mm-hmm. but close to that you get an edgy look and a more realistic look at what Batman would be like. The main fight in that comic, which I highly recommend, is the SWAT team versus Batman. Yeah. Um, and it's mm-hmm. fucking phenomenal how he uses his, like he's both a detective, but this is Frank Miller as Batman is very, he's a person that's a victim, but instead of blaming other groups and criminals, he blames the system that failed him. Yeah. And, he, and that's what I think is awesome about Batman. And then you jump into Dark Knight, which is a retired Batman because soups are illegal. Yeah. Things are going to muck. Crime is going crazy. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Ethan. That's that's the one with my, unless I'm mistaken, that's the one with my favorite Robin. That's with yes. Girl Robin, Girl right? Robin, absolutely. Yeah, Girl Robin I, comes out of that. That whole story is wild. Yeah, the whole like story is super crazy. old. Yeah, he's super yeah. old. Reagan is president. Um, he has enforced a law that has gotten all superheroes to retire and but secretly superman is the only acting one and those who have not and these are just mild spoilers uh certain heroes basically get taken out of commission by superman if you did not obey the law so he's super boy scout in this where yeah. bruce is just forcefully retired but gotham goes under siege basically because it's the cops versus the gang of mutants that have come out and through all this, it's just haunting him that his city's just falling apart. And he That's gets right. back the cow and he puts it back he on He gets again. back on the horse literally and literally. rides to justice. Uh, and the <laughs> writing in that is stellar because Frank Miller goes, it's all thought bubbles. That's why he couldn't really do it in a movie because it's th- he's like, oh, yes, fighting cops. I haven't done this in a while. And it explains why he has a big yellow emblem. He's like, people think I wear this to like look gimmicky. No, it's so they target this on purpose where my bulletproof chest is. Like he's methodical and deranged like clearly crime fighting through all these years has made yeah. him insane it's a wild Robin soldier that's one of the bet like the thing i love is like that's a good soldier like this is wartime batman this is yeah. like i've been doing this for so long that it has drove me insane and this is also a time where a lot of people if you were you know the aids epidemics happening um as i said earlier things that are bad you're one of the minorities during this time you feel that the police are not an ally uh, man, it sounds familiar to certain things happening. <laughs> Weird. The government's not um, on your side. The government's not on your side. Uh, you know, they're parading like everything's fine and nothing, you know, we're, we're good to go. Not ringing a bell. No, I can't. Yeah, and then I, don't, I can't We also that. get other great vigil. We get Daredevil run as well. Daredevil at this time goes through a whole thing and Frank Miller is behind that as well. Well, and also Daredevil had the added level of Catholicism, uh, which uh, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a whole layer to Daredevil that is also about being Catholic in America, which is fascinating um, because you would assume that, you know, if you're Catholic in America, that, you I mean, ultimately it's a Christian nation, so you'll fit right, right in. Right? Uh-uh. No, yeah. Catholics, Catholics face a lot of discrimination, uh, yeah. mainly because of the idea that they are behold. It's the same thing Catholics have always faced. They are beholden to a pope in another nation. And, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, and, Kennedy, and, right? You guys brought that up on an earlier episode. And I was like, oh, I yep. have no fucking idea. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah. So there, and, and also there was the immediate assumption that if you were Catholic, you were Irish or Italian. Uh, which, That's as you know, no. America is um, not great with new things. So. Nope. 
Yeah, and be- and before too, DC again was fighting the campiness of 1966 Batman, you know, where they're like literally just making jokes and having yeah, Bat- Dan is doing the 60s dance over the uh, the bat dance that you can look up <laughs> in a GIF. Um, so this really is the what inspires 89 Batman. Yeah, uh, Tim Burton's version, where it's a grittier, more violent <laughs> uh, city, and that in its own Nothing. like looks campy now, but for if you go to that time, it was literally just. Superman and all its sequels that happen as far yeah. as superhero movies go. And you have Michael Keaton where people are like, what, Michael Keaton? Michael this Keaton. happens with every Keaton. casting of Batman, I find, because yeah. everyone's doing that with Robert Pattinson right now. I'm still doing I mean, that. I think he's going to kill it. I think I think, think, he's, he's, I think that's the reason Bruce they put Wayne, on that I'm trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. I think it's going to be wonderful. I love the memes of him with the, the eye makeup on. Everyone's getting pissed about that. But they put uh, my chemical romance lyrics under it. And it makes me laugh so much. I, I'm all for it. Really it's funny. fine. Um, but I love. I think that that's a really cool study of that because he's not a do-gooder anymore. He's literally a vigilante. He's, what he's doing is illegal, and mm-hmm. I, that's what made me fall in love with the character. Is that he's doing all these things and he pushes what he, what as we said earlier. He's not a superhero, right? Um, he doesn't have these powers. His and he has no not, powers. Unlike no. what Joss Whedon wrote, his superpower isn't he's rich. I fucking hate that movie. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's not a superpower. No, no but uh, the, the, the core of that character to me is doesn't want anyone else to go through what he did, which we all know is origin because they've shot it eight, eight million times. There's poor uh, parents. The, the per, yeah, poor parents. <laughs> I love people that are like, if I see fucking pearls in this next movie one more goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever need to see Batman's parents get shot or Uncle Ben. Uncle get Ben, shot. right? Jesus, right? I get it. They Uncle ruined ben. the man. Amazing Spider Man. They did a terrible job with that Uncle Ben story with him yeah, trying they, to grab the gun what, yeah. to disarm the guy. Come <laughs> on, she was like, "I'm not a fully old man. I'm grabbing it, damn it!" <laughs> no, they 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 nailed it in the Sam Raimi one because that's how it's supposed to be, which is like he is a kind, gentle man who would maybe try to talk the criminal out of shooting yeah. him, yeah, but not grab at him. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Come <was> here. <laughs> well, hold on now. <laughs> and also, this is where you get, uh, bring it back to X-Men, you get Jim Lee X-Men. Uh, so that's where mm-hmm. his up career is coming up, and you get those awesome covers. Every Wolverine becomes mainstream here. Uh, you get Lobo. <laughs> Sorry, you- I'm not a Wolverine fan. I'm going to make that very <laughs> clear to everybody really? here. Yeah, Wolverine. <laughs> I loved Wolverine in the comic books. I loved Wolverine in the show because Wolverine served a very important uh, 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 I, he was he was a very important role in the comic book, which was he was the man who didn't know his past. So there was this fascinating backstory. But then ultimately, he was the shit talker of the team who was not a good fighter. He was, in yeah. fact, terrible terrible at fighting the healing factor was only noticeable because he was constantly getting his ass kicked so the only <laughs> reason he was good in a fight was because he got back up relatively quicker than anybody else but right. that's what wolverine was supposed to be is this like trash talking like tough guy who got his like his you know fucking head shoved through a wall early on in the fight and then came back midway just like all right who did that right he was, <laughs> yeah yeah like and then the movies happen and all of a sudden he's a handsome um, you know, he's master Jackman. pugilist and yeah, um, yeah that's he's, that's all anyone Marvel. knows him for now. Yeah, it sucks. That's, right. that's true. Stupid. Wolverine. And we also get Punisher, so you get a lot of these uh, heroes yeah. taking rules in their own, like the law in their own hands, mm-hmm. for a lot of people that feel overlooked, and that's where. Um, and I laugh and the reason I bring up like where were we in the 80s like people think really nostalgic to pop music and things but if you read a DC comic or like a Frank Miller comic back then you're like fuck things are really messed up like they were no, Watchmen, Watchmen yeah. and, and we did a whole episode on that on the show but the comic itself is a huge reflection on that and going over the Cold War as far as what's going and a and originally they wanted that to be uh, like D-list DC heroes and DC were like, no, you can make up your own. Like, no, nope. too fucked up. Don't take <laughs> no, no, don't no, use yeah. our people. No, no thank you. Yeah. No. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna skip the nineties, right? Because the nineties was just a shit pile for comic books. It's just, it yeah, was... that, it gets it gets all over the place. I the main thing I covered from the nineties was static shock and we we briefly covered spawn. The, I mean, Marvel, get it. the TV shows in the 90s is where TV comic show, books yeah. were, were That's where surviving. they went. 
all the yeah. talent went to TV, I think, because Batman, yeah. the animated series, is incredible. Superman absolutely was also really good. All the, the Marvel X-Men shows. series, the Spider-Man series, like that. That's that was the era for TV. But comic yeah. books, if you if you are trying to get into old, old comic books, skip the '90s. It was a period yeah. of time where all the men were unrealistically built and muscular, yeah. and all of the women were scantily clad. So I guess if that's what you're looking for, then awesome. Go read '90s comic <laughs> books. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there was not there. There was not besides a few um, a few needles in that haystack. It was mainly just hay. Yeah, yeah. and and for me, I have a blur with that because I, I didn't read any when I read them was two thousand five, and it was Civil War yeah. that grabbed me into comics. And the reason me it grabbed too. me was really because yeah. Captain America that first issue where he's like, they're like, hey, you got to register. There was an accident that happened. You guys got to we got to be government agents now. You got to come out. And he's like, no, a lot of people could get hurt. And to me, Chris Evans captures that character so perfectly. Mm-hmm. And they did their own great version of it in the movie, I thought, which is the same. And so core is like, even though Cap, you think of him as he's supposed to be Mr. Government agent, whatever. He like, no, he stands for morals. And that's what a true American spirit is. It's not exactly. whatever the home team says goes, right? It's about the right morals, what this country's founded on. And yep. him just fucking jumping out of the helicarrier and getting onto a jet and just going full on rogue in this was yeah. fucking phenomenal. No one I'll I'll tell you from from the outside as a person who had just finished House of M and knew Civil War was on the horizon, we knew what the main uh inciting incident of Civil War was going to be before those comics came out. We as fans all assumed it was Captain America and the government versus Tony Stark and the rogue superheroes. So yeah. when that shit yeah. happened in the comic, we were all just like, "Oh, oh, sh- oh shit! Okay, yeah. yeah, wait, hang on. This is this is the opposite, and I can't picture how this goes." In Civil War, Civil War. If you if you've only seen the movie, it is very, very, very different. Yes, um, <laughs> very, very, very different because. In that, uh, literally, there is it is a commentary on reality TV shows in the beginning, which is a team of superheroes yeah. has their own reality TV show uh, and hunts down a bunch of old supervillains. And one of those supervillains blows up next to a school and kills hundreds of kids, which is what brings about the Registration Act, which anyone can understand the purpose of just by reading that inciting incident. It's easy yeah. to go like, oh, yeah, no, maybe we shouldn't just have anybody running around. Um, but what came after it was this long run of just, uh, it's carved out what Marvel became moving forward. And in the movie universe, it gave a moral compass to all the characters, including ones who didn't have, like Spider-Man always had his moral compass. You knew where he was going to fall when, when the, the chips were in play, but you didn't necessarily know what Hawkeye was going to do, right? Yeah. Like you wouldn't necessarily know because he was kind of roguish in the beginning. But so it gave these moral compasses to all the characters that now you cannot take away from them. And it has shaped what Marvel has become, which is just to, so much more. To me, two of my mm-hmm. favorite moments happened with Hank Pym and Cap because to me, I didn't, I knew Cap was like, yeah, he's a Boy Scout with a shield, whatever. Like I, I remember a Spider Man episode that covered him and he, does the sacrifice again where he has to jump back in time um, or get lost in like a phantom zone. But mm-hmm. I love it because uh, Hank is presses a button that calls shield in to capture cap. And he's like, did you not do that? And he's like, Hank, he's like, cap, don't make me do this. And he starts to get big. And he's like, Hey, you remember a long time ago, you asked me what the difference between what we do and what war was. Don't make me show you. And it was like, fuck you see cap. Like, and then he throws his shield, bounces it, and breaks his nose through that, like... Yeah. You know, where he's like, you don't understand. You think you know me? No, I hold my punches back, but I will go all out in this if I have yeah. to. Yeah. And that was, like, fucking terrifying. It was. <laughs> and also, that also led to the great line drawn between Punisher and Captain America. Uh, yeah, that the, was like, Same soldier, different war. Um, yeah, there, there was... Oh, Civil War really is the face. Civil War and Ultimate Comics are yeah, ultimately yeah. Uh, that that shape because Ultimate is fantastic. Ultimate Spider Man. Uh, so in in the two thousands, Marvel uh, was trying to answer the question of, hey, where do I start reading? Uh, yeah. Because there were new fans with the movies, with with like with X Men, with Spider Man. So they created the Ultimate Universe, which was, hey, we're going to retell our classic stories, but we're going to start it from square one with a modern take. And that's where you got the ultimates, which was the retelling of the Avengers spectacular comic book. 
Um, you get uh, Ultimate X Men, which wasn't great until the end. And yeah, Nick Fury. Uh, that's yeah, where they made yeah. him look like Samuel oh, Jackson. Reboot. Yeah, total um, total change. Yeah. But then, yeah. but then, more importantly, I think the the thing that really stood the test out of that was Ultimate Spider Man and what mm-hmm. became of that. Because in the spoilers, sorry anybody, I guess if you are going to read <laughs> Ultimate Spider Man, stop here. You guys should um, really read Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah, Let me tell you about you. the end of it. Um, but but uh, Peter Parker dies in that comic book, and it's a beautiful, beautifully done death, which then led fans kind of scratching their head because the comic was still running, right? So what's the comic without Spider-Man? And that's when Marvel pulled out Miles Morales, which was, I, I, I mean, I so we talked about, about the origin of him. Oh, please. Yeah. So Mark Bernardin, who does Fat Man Beyond with Kevin Smith, he was a writer in Hollywood magazine at the time. And they were thinking about doing Amazing Spider-Man, who should they should cast. And he was like, why don't you make it a black actor? Like, why does Peter Parker have to be white? He's from Queens. Like, yeah. what does that look like more than ever someone struggling in Queens? And he thought Donald Glover would be great for it. So Donald Glover was like, yeah, awesome. And that's why he's wearing a Spider-Man shirt in season two of Community in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, he was like, he was like, yeah, I'd love to, whatever. Because he's young. His, this is Donald Glover before the albums, before everything. Sure. He's the mega star that he is. And that inspired the artist because he has two adopted uh, black children. So he was like, yeah, there's not many superheroes for them. And decided to make a multicultural superhero as Spider-Man. So based off like someone saying what they should do in the movies and they clearly didn't listen, they did Andrew Garfield. He put him in the comics. It was inspired from his own, wanted to inspire his kids um, to give them something to look a role model there. And that's why Miles, you get Miles Morales, who's a Puerto Rican black uh, Spider-Man. In fact, yeah. uh, if you ever uh, are thinking like, oh man, Sony's okay as a company, don't forget during their big email <laughs> hack, uh, it was revealed that Sony executives specifically put in the contract for Spider-Man with Marvel that uh, Marvel was not allowed to hire a black actor to play Spider-Man. Uh, they specifically uh, really? made it a contractual obligation that it was a white man. So right. let's just remember that Sony is uh, pretty terrible too. Um, ah. But corporations yeah. suck in general <laughs> they sure do Mostly, um, yeah. <laughs> but miles morales so what's interesting about his introduction as well because you kind of mentioned this previously and this is where i went on my soapbox uh when when he first came out fans wrote some awful fucking letters to marvel Fan saying to mark bernard and donald glover death threats like pe- yep. like people are pieces of shit <laughs> yep and so <laughs> what i what i love and i i think it was the second issue or third issue of ultimate spider-man at the end brian michael bendis used to like to do what stan lee always did which is why brian michael bendis is one of my favorite writers where he would write his soapbox at the end and he would publish questions that were sent to him um, and would and would like yeah so he always had those at the end of his issues and in that uh he decided to take a page and dedicate it specifically to the pieces of shit who wrote hate mail and was like, hey, you took the time to wrote, write hate mail and you didn't take the time to censor your name while sending it to me. So I'm going to publish your hate mail oh, and here's fuck. your name. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, like he specifically called out the the terrible people. He did get in a lot of trouble uh, for that because they were yeah. still private citizens, but fuck it, fuck Nazis, fuck racists. Yeah. yeah. I stand by that, so. And I oh, think uh, for for like Ultimate, or Ultimate Spider-Man, um, what am I blanking on? What was the last the animated movie that just came out? Why am I blanking on Spider Verse? Spider Verse. Thank you, Jesus. It's a long day. Uh, no, Which I was just watching. <laughs> For all spectacular those, uh, we film. Were, yeah, um, oh, good. it's my it's my son's favorite film, and that's his Spider Man. Miles is his Spider Man, and that's huge. Um, that's great. I had, yeah, I had a, I had a, was talking to a friend of the show who was like, things are going bad. I'm like, one thing I do look at positively throughout, and why I'm talking about representation is when I grew up as a kid, Disney was like white princesses, like you know same like this you only saw the same things and it wasn't until like the past year me and my son have watched coco and that broke me because like like i'm not mexican but i have a puerto rican grandmother and like she is the like the be all like and she's still with us and everything but like i could relate to that and i was crying because i was literally like holy shit like i would never in a million years think they would focus on a movie about his like spanish culture and latin culture and it's important because my son's growing up with like uh, Princess and the Frog is one of his other favorite movies. Moana, like 
there's he has different things to look at versus yeah. just yeah. the same thing over and over again. And it's not that liberal agenda or any bullshit people want to hate on. It's it's important to see that to see that it's possible. Like a lot of yeah. people talk about that you don't know it's real or it's something you can do till you see someone like you doing it. And that's the, yeah. the whole point of it. Like Spider-Verse is fucking phenomenal. Like it is. that movie as a whole does so much and it's not shoehorned in diversity in any way. It's, it's not. It has a lot of heart in it and it's fucking fantastic. And it's my favorite Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Mine it too. Is I by love far it. the best Spider-Man movie. Uh, yeah. Hands down. There's yeah. no question. And I'm an, I, I love the Tobey Maguire films. I love yeah. everything about them, but especially the third one. I, no, not, I can have this discussion. <laughs> I don't if you want to go down this rabbit hole, I'm I can sure do this. It's already two hours long. I don't want to add that no. discussion on well, Yeah, I think I think we we should we should wrap up. But I do think before we do that, I think we have to talk about what ultimately brought about the reason for this episode, and we need to talk about oh, the modern cultural uh, phenomenon that is Black Panther. Um, yeah, and and the the tragedy that that struck this week, uh, or whenever this comes out. Um, because uh, for for a character that has only had one film, um, arguably it is one of the most important movies Marvel has made because it had a real a real tough conversation buried in it. Yeah. Um, and in that tough conversation, Marvel still managed to give a a an honest shake to an old hero with a modern take. Right. Yeah. So it was it was a it was a good interpretation of, of a classic hero, but it was done in a way that gives it, it, it opens the doors to everyone now to say, hey, this this is what a film looks like if you actually don't just do tokenism, if you actually yeah. put a black actor and make it a black story. This yeah. is what you can have. There is a market for this. Businesses need to understand there's a market for this because there is a generation, not even just a generation, there is an entire subset of culture that is underrepresented and hungry for 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 portrayal in such yeah. a positive manner. And that's what Chadwick Boseman gave us with 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 T'Challa. Like that's I mean, not even just him, everyone in that film. Yeah. Right? They, they 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 gave us a utopia that like everyone would want like i put it up there with the galactic federation of yeah. like uh, yeah. of like a, a, and, a, a aspirational utopia and yeah. another thing that just come out is he had cancer throughout mm-hmm. 2016 and now so at the end of civil war i believe is where he found out and mm-hmm. the thing i found out today is uh ryan coogler the director of black panther does also phenomenal work and if anyone see like he did creed and that's yeah. awesome because he took basically an old mythology and made it his own because his dad loved Rocky movies. So he was like, I want to explore what happened to Apollo's legacy. And that movie is its own struggle about what it's like to be just want to be seen. Like under it's yeah. about boxing, but really it's about the story of like and the black struggle of being seen and heard in America. And I think the awesome thing they did with the movie, he found out when he was on set for Civil War, he was like, he found out Bozeman decided to make T'Challa with an African accent because of the actor who played his father. Yeah. And on the set that day, he actually learned uh, the language that that actor can speak. I believe it's from Chad that was native and he thought it was very important. They were still figuring that out. Like Marvel ha- up was like, oh, we're not sure what he's going to sound like. And he was like, no, I think it's really important that he's an African accent that isn't colonized by the West or influenced by that. And he yeah. does not, if you hear that actor, he does not speak with that Anything accent like, like this. Yeah. And I think it's really great and important to show that because what Dan's talking about too, it's not, the 90s has a lot of black superhero movies that are like, poke, they're really jokey and funny and they're like superheroes from the hood. And that's also its own representation important. But I think there's a real thing for excellence and like coming from a kingdom to have, there is African yeah. kings. Like they're a real legacy just beyond European fantasy that we always think of. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I think that's important for people to see that. And I loved what they did with Killmonger. Like Killmonger to oh. me is like, he is not the villain. He is, everything he's saying is true. And that hurts yeah. even more. And the fact that it's in a fucking Marvel movie it's, that made over a billion dollars is crazy to think. Like it uh, is the scene in him in the museum. I, uh, that's what I loved in that movie was just, he's like, I think I'm going to take it back. And he's like, cause yeah, you yeah. stole it. And I'm like, fuck that is like, none of that is the reason it has so much heart in it. It's like, He's not wrong. The way he's doing it might be, but he is, it's, it's intense. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's just wild to me, and I, I haven't thought about it until this episode. The parallel between Killmonger and Magneto yeah. in X Men, how they're the as villains, they're they're just misunderstood, but they're not wrong whatsoever. No. Yeah, no, they just have a different method. Their method is not the pacifism route, and arguably there is there is a time to fight, and so that becomes a real discussion. Yeah. Um, because there is also in that time to fight, there is taking it too far. And that's what you're kind of struggling with. But ultimately, if we're just talking about the ideological struggle between whether it be T'Challa and, and Killmonger or Xavier and Magneto, right? Ultimately, that conversation, neither of them wins. Yeah. yeah. That, that ideological struggle, no one is right or wrong. It is just that is that is two sides of the same coin. Yeah. You can you can make those those stances about their actions, but you can't about their ideals. Yeah, and it's, it's huge. Like I remember great. for me after I saw opening day and I came to work the next day, and everyone at work was doing that accent jokingly. But more than I noticed ever, there was a difference. Except from like my black coworkers were like there was there was something different, right? Because and I never thought about it until I saw some of them making the voices, yeah. and joking, and doing Wakanda forever. And I did not join in, obviously. Um, but it was a fucking fantastic movie. And they finally had their Superman. Like, that's, I think, important to... Yes. You know, because people are like, really, yeah. why do they have to make it... A, I'm like, shut the fuck up. There are, like, so many arguments on the internet. It was like, what What would people do if they made an all-white superhero that was a god and mythology? Like, they did it. It's Thor. It's fucking Thor. Thor. It's Thor's it's mythology. It's all but, white people. And people got even, pissed. Elders Elba's in that. <laughs> even even further, one one, I think, the bigger note that came out of black panther beyond that they had their own superman is that finally finally there was a myth a lot there was a camelot for black culture too. yeah yes right absolutely. there was there was finally and 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 yeah we all know wakanda is not real we understand that concept but there are enough fictional places that white people have that we can imagine ourselves in like fuck yeah, we can perfect. imagine ourselves in middle earth and we're gonna fit right in right yeah, like, yeah. But, but but if you're black you don't have that because that representation has never been there and i and your heroes look, are always coming overcoming adversity right this is to exactly. talk he's a king a he champion. is a goddamn king he's it's, not coming overcoming adversity yeah. from that he's he's not dealing with that struggle and i hope wakanda is just the first of many i hope it's not the only um but like that's 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 something it gives an identity um yeah. to to those who who have never had that in the pop culture zeitgeist which is again important it's so important to feel like you belong it really yeah. is and it's stupid that it was 2018 to see that right but i mean and, and whatever the time being as far as that but the things that are coming in the future waves are because of that movie because that yeah. movie was successful Disney that owns them is like, oh shit, we really probably should have made Solo actually Lando. Like we yeah. really should have faith in, in actors not playing stereotypical roles or being just the side character. Like they, like anyone can hold their own movie and they're doing more things like that. And as I said, it's not changing the world, so to speak, but it's important to see that representation, little steps, I'll take that. Like they're doing yeah, it because well, it made money. Like let's, I'll, I'll be frank, they're not doing it out well, of the kindness of their heart. Of if, course, if of course. Bombed, we would see a different lineup. I think you wouldn't see, but uh, no, this is how you change the world. Yeah, this absolutely. is the point. This, this is how you change the world in, in the slowest way, but it, it does oh, over yeah, time a, take its hold. Like this is, this is what happens. This is how you move a monolith is right. you slowly start showing the side that no one wanted to show before, but showing it in a positive light. Like uh, that's, that's how you do it. And just make it normal. Yeah. But yeah, but thank you guys so much. I know it was long. We go from, <laughs> comic books to racial injustice all bundled up <laughs> let us know in the comments on twitter what you guys thought of your favorite superheroes um and also uh next time if you hear someone interested be be that person that's positively like you should check out this book or check out this movie like this is american folklore in a different level and it can relate to people and help them struggle but with that or if you want comic yeah. book recommendations hit me up you guys know yeah, I am really. on Twitter. Yeah. Like I will, I will recommend books yeah. all the fucking time. I don't, yeah. I have read too many. A lot of them I have, and I don't even read. I'll just mail them to you. I don't, <laughs> I don't care. Fuck it. Ethan, if I had all of new X-Men still, I would send it to you just so I you can read that. it. I, I think I have, I think I have like half of it. So I can at least provide you with half. 
Well, I'll just read my address out loud right now on the air. Perfect. Perfect. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to write it down. Okay. It's 555. What? (laughs) ABC Avenue. It's Sesame Street. (laughs) Oh, I've been there. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you guys so much for going on this journey with us. Uh, Again, share with us in the comments what you guys think, what your favorite superheroes are. Um, This will go out early September, so it'll be a little while out, but... We're going to probably bump this up to be more relevant, too, because we're talking about something that currently just happened. And if you want us to deep dive into any of these characters as well, there's enough comic book fans in the GFY team. We can do a whole episode on X-Men. We can do a whole episode on any of this. So let us know. Also, we still need Brett's recap of the Marvel movies because he's only seen some of them. And he's no, no, no. He's seen seen most of them now because Uh, of uh, because of. So yeah, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I really wanted I still, to hear his backstory of what, <laughs> why Doctor Strange is suddenly in here. Like, I still think we need that because I don't think he paid a full amount of attention. No, so I, I yeah. still think it would I be want good. him to tell us what happens in those movies. Maybe yeah. we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, right, we'll, 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 we'll make it happen. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Comic book flipping pages. <laughs> Yeah, th- Ethan, this is where you add the Danny Elfman. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that.